folks, thank you so much for showing up tonight. Uh, I think you're going to have a, a lot of great information um, about hormones and maybe a little bit about aging in general. I'm glad to see that we have one fellow male here. Uh, actually, two. two. Oh, that's good. That's pretty good because this is about men. You know, we'll, we'll focus probably mostly on, on ladies. Uh, but uh, this is also something that's great for men, too. Uh, yours truly is, has been involved in that in the last five or six years. So uh, I'm just going to start off by introducing Mike here and uh, just tell you that uh, starting about 15, 20 years ago, the medical and scientific uh, 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 professionals became really interested in what we can do to slow down uh, the aging process. And uh, we worked at that for about uh, maybe 15 years before anything happened at all. And finally what happened was Suzanne Summers. <laughs> and Suzanne Summers came and wrote a book which basically put this whole thing on the map. So <laughs> it's not a bad book too. She's got two books out. Maybe most of you have read the book. I do recommend it. We don't actually do the hormone therapy like she talks about. We do a, in her form of hormone therapy. You have periods in ours. You don't. But, but shy of that, you still get the same benefits out. And I, I'm here to tell you that um, the, the biggest single thing that has happened in the whole anti-aging movement, which is those lots of the discoveries and breakthroughs, the biggest single thing is the proper use of bioidentical hormones. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to treat you about that. It's not just about taking care of hot flashes. There's a whole lot more than that that's going on. We are, I'm so pleased to have uh, Mike here from Mike's Pharmacy. Uh, we worked with Mike for many, many years. He is, he's the guy. And uh, he, they, they provide a great service. They make, they make a fabulous product. Uh, and uh, so, and Mike's very knowledgeable about this. So he's going to start off and start explaining the, the whole issue of hormones to so give you an idea of it. Then I'm going to kind of wrap it up and show you some very interesting things I more or less guarantee you you've never seen or heard of before, but which makes all the difference on what these hormones are all about. So Mike, go ahead and take over. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I'm a pharmacist in foremost, you know, I'm not a public speaker. Mm -hmm. But um, just a little bit about me. Um, as you can tell, you know, that accent does not come from Carson City. <laughs> uh, even so, I just became in uh, May a American citizen after 25 years being uh, here in the United States. So I thought, I thought once I become an American, the accent would be gone. <laughs> How do you pronounce your last name? How to it. it. It's actually Flemish. Um, from the Belgium, Netherlands region, and it means wooden house in, in Flemish. Uh, I've been, like I said, 25 years in the United States, and I went to school here in, uh, in the United States. I went to Pocatello, Idaho, uh, Idaho State University, and uh, I graduated in 1991. Um, I did my doctorate in pharmacy, and uh, I've been working for the first five years Pay, trying to pay back student loans, <laughs> so um, I worked at Long's, which was a great experience for me. You know, uh, they taught me a lot. And then uh, ten years ago, I decided, you know, I'm going to try to open up my own pharmacy. And we opened up, and uh, we started working, and I started to get into uh, compounding because compounding for me is I, uh, the the fun part of uh, pharmacy. You know, counting pills is fine, you know. But uh, what's, well, how do they make the, uh, those pills? How do, what is the research behind? How, uh, what's the techniques? So I went to PCCA. PCCA is the Professional Compounding Centers of America. And they taught me a lot about uh, compounding. So for the last 10 years now, I've been doing compounding. And I worked with Dr. Schoenberger for almost like eight years, nine, nine years together. And I think we, we are doing a pretty good job because we don't have a lot of grappy women. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, come, they, 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 they come in and they go back home and they come back for their, for, for their medication. So um, with that said, uh, what we're going to be talking about is uh, bioidentical hormones. It's such a huge subject, you know. And this is my first presentation that I'm doing, so maybe our, uh, some things will be duplicated, but let's start, you know. Okay, what's, what's, uh, 
what's bioidentical hormone? Why do we use bioidentical hormone? <laughs> Why is the evergreen talking to the, the aspen, you know? The, the evergreen never changes, but the aspen gets into the changes. So what are the changes? A, a couple of definitions that I had are pre-menopause. Pre-menopause begins uh, in young women when they have their first period. And um, with all the other hormones being in, in the body, with the uh, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormones, those are all hormones for, for, the, for the body to grow estrogen and progesterone. <coughs> but with all, those, all of those hormones and all those compounds, there are going to be problems coming up. You know, PMS, fibrocystic breast, maybe in a large uterus, uterine fi uh, fibro fibroids, maybe irregular or excessive menstrual periods. Now we got, there's a second uh, menopause, which is the perimenopause. Um, that's, uh, uh, during this time, you, uh, the body will experience some changes in hormones. Progesterone uh, level starts to, uh, to decrease, and they would really, around the age of 35, the progesterone really is going to start to diminish. The uh, estrogen will also decrease, not as bad, but they will decrease. And then the, then the, the women are going to start, again, uh, pre-menopause, which can last up to 15 years until the age around of 50, 51. Um, uh, what is uh, the menopause? Menopause uh, is when um, the woman loses all the menstrual cycle for at least 12 months. Um, uh, after, after the missing those, then you can really say you, you have the menopausal um, cycle. Um, and it's uh, the, the time where all the ovaries cease to produce uh, certain sex uh, hormones. Most most of them, uh, most notably, it's the, the estrogens. Now, when menopause occurs, the only source of uh, estrogen will be produced by the adrenal glands because the ovaries are no longer functioning. You know, so the some somewhat some uh, organ has to take over the projection of estrogen, and that will be the adrenal gland. Now, the change. You know, the, uh, that's what all the women are waiting for for the change. My wife is shortly before the change, you know. <laughs> so, um, doing this talk, you know, will prepare me for, <laughs> for the next, uh, for the next uh, few few months. You think it. Oh, yeah, you know, probably then I, I talk myself into it, you know. <laughs> you know so again, the, the, the change is when the reproductive, uh, reproductive cycle stops. Um, and some of the most common symptoms of menopause you know, um, will be some vasomotor symptoms, you know, uh, all the contractions, the muscles are, are starting to lose uh, the, their strength, vaginal atrophy, dryness, memory loss. Do men have uh, that too? Because we have memory loss too. So we <laughs> 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 And then loss of <laughs> 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 Well, when does it all of that happen? Most of the time it happens around the age of uh, 51, 50, 51. Menopause uh, starts before the age of 45, and uh, pre uh, perimenopause is around 35, it starts around 35. So those are the 15 years from perimenopause to menopause, where, you know, that's where we do our work to, to keep everybody uh, sane, men and women. <laughs> What happens when uh, the, the, the ovarian function ceases? We already talked about it. The, the estrogen decreases, progesterone and testosterone decrease. And those those sex hormones, you know, they are not just sex, horm uh, sex hormones. They will play everywhere in the body. You know, they will influence any, everything in the body. And that's why when somebody needs a hormone replacement, you know, that's we got to do it. We got to do it. Um, the hormones, what are hormones? You know, hormones comes from the Greek word hormone, which means set emotions. Hormones are like messengers. You know, 
They are being excreted and then they travel through the body, long distances, small distances, and they will carry certain messages to certain organs. And when that, uh, when that those hormones are lacking, there is no co communication between brain, between organs. So that's why um, they, they are very, very important. There are approximately four, there are four types of hormones. <coughs> uh, we have, we have the, uh, the amine hormones, uh, which are thyroxines, which are the T4, that's the, the, the centroid, you know, levothyroxines. Then you have a peptide hormone, which is very important, which is insulin. And um, that's one of the very, one of the very most important uh, hormones also in the body is insulin to carry the sugar into the cells for, for energy. Then we have uh, what they call lipid and uh, phospholipid. Both are the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins, um, they, are, they are different ones. They carry messages also for pain. Also, prostaglandins are, are being used also as uh, hormones too, uh, for sex hormones. And then the steroid hormones, that's what we're going to be talking about, are the estrogens and testosterone. Don't be afraid about steroid, you know, it's not, uh, it's not the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, <laughs> anabolic steroids. Those are corticoid steroids. They are made by the body and they, are, they don't uh, increase the, bio, the, the, the body mass. Estrogen. What is the role of estrogen? Well, I didn't have enough room to put all the all the, the roles, but one of the most important ones, they prepare the linings for the uterus for the pregnancy. And then they promote the growth of the fetus. They prevent bone uh, destruction. Uh, they prevent, they, they are, estrogen also prevents a high, a hypertension. You know, the literature is a little bit uh, iffy without it, but uh, there have been studies showing that actually the the blood pressure uh, was uh, dropping. They would, uh, they would lower insulin levels. And they would increase body fat, <laughs> increase water and sodium retention. And uh, so the many physicians uh, believe that circulating estrogens provide cardiac protection and protections from Alzheimer's disease. They have actually a, um, a study here and uh, it was in uh, the archives of medical, uh, inter uh, internal medical. They had three groups. They have women with, with normal co coronary arteries, healthy women, uh, women with moderate uh, cardiac uh, coronary artery disease, and some with severe coronary artery disease. I'm colorblind, unfortunately, so that top line, they never used any form of estrogen replacement therapy. Um, the, so you will see that, uh, no, the top line they used, the bottom line they didn't. So those in the healthy women, when you look over a, a period of 120 months, um, look how deep, almost 10% 10, 10 uh, died because of uh, whatever coronary uh, function and, uh, and other um, complication. People, uh, women who had moderate coronary artery disease, it went even down further. It went down back almost 15%. And look where the people who, uh, for the women who had already severe coronary artery disease, the ones who used, uh, they remained pretty much the same but the ones who never used really dropped the ones like 40% uh, of them uh, died. So that was one of the few studies which really uh, showed that uh, the use of uh, estrogen replacement therapy has its place. There have been studies who have said uh, it, it's not that bad, but um, it will help. Other, um, other um, Hormones in the body is progesterone and testosterone. Well, what's the role of progesterone? It promotes bone growth. And it, pre uh, it prepares the endometrium to, for the implantation of the fertilized egg. Uh, it prevents water retention. It serves also as an antidepressant. And that's why uh, many husbands, when they come to pick up the, their wife's medication, they say, I need my wife's sanity <laughs> um, So. 
so that uh, it works as a natural uh, antidepressant. <laughs> And also, it acts as a precursor to other to other uh, sex hormones. Well, testosterone, you know, that's usually they they, are, they all think it's the male hormone, but women produce also testosterone, and then the function is the same thing: increase lib uh, libido, increase uh, strength, um, improve and protect uh, and uh, protect the cardiac function. I couldn't find a, a, a slide with, a, with some studies, but uh, there are a couple of studies which show that testosterone is also uh, <coughs> helps the, the cardiac function. Well, what are the symptoms of the change? You know, there's a delicate, there's a, all those hormones, you know, when, when, when you see some of those strength, they are really small changes because small changes can cause a big change, you know, it's a, a change, you cannot just double up your medication um, because you don't feel right, you cannot just double up because uh, that's going to be way too much, so there's a very delicate balance to go from therapeutic value to overdosing or underdosing, and when we don't want to overdose, um, underdosing you will know a lot quicker and, and it's not as dangerous, but overdosing can be a problem. And uh, it's critical for the physical, emotional, <coughs> emotional, you know, so you got to, the two of there, you know, make sure that <laughs> everybody gets their stuff. Um, and uh, also the mental health of all women. So again, you know, it, it repeats that the, uh, at the onset of menopause, the decreased level of the, the circulating sex hormones um, they will manifest themselves in different ways. They will complain, many women are going to complain of the weight gain, depression, migraines, breast tenderness, acne, sleep disorders, the night sweats, the dreaded night sweats, you know, hot flashes, hair loss. You know, a lot of women come to me at the pharmacy and say, you know, I just brushed my hair and I have a, a whole hand of, uh, of hair in, in the sink. So that uh, could be um, a sign of decreased uh, hormones and diminished sex drive. Some other uh, uh, symptoms are menopause, osteoporosis, <laughs> bone loss, increased cholesterol, and they, they uh, associate Alzheimer's, uh, accelerate Alzheimer's development on decreased hormones. So we don't want to do this. <laughs> so what, what can we do about it? Well, you go see Dr. Schoenberg. He'll take care of you. I'm going to give you a prescription. I'm going to fill it. <laughs> and then you're going to feel good. Uh, a lot, for, for a lot of times, you know, they didn't know what to do. They had no clue uh, what, what the, the, the disease was. They had no clue to, f to figure out what hormones um, except the Chinese in <coughs> 1200 AD, they took urine from a woman and they evaporated it and they the ground up the crystals and then the crystals helped some of those symptoms. But they didn't know that there was probably estrogen in, in the urine, so, that what, uh, so they didn't know what that's where the first really uh, count on use of uh, hormones. It was by the Chinese. So, and there's no, there's no cookie, uh, cookie cutter approach. You know, they, the only one, it was in 1970 when Primarine came out. I think, you know, I, I, I don't have the date, you know, I have memory loss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yeah, it's like, you know. Uh, Premarine came out, you know, and Premarine at that time was the wonder drug. You know, suddenly they had, somebody had a wife had a drug in, in hand, they gave it to the women, and the women had, were free of hot flashes. No night sweats. Everything started to get better. Uh, so that was, the first drug, and it was a, almost considered a miracle drug, you know. And then on top of that, they found uh, a, a synthetic uh, progesterone, medroxyprogesterone, Provera. 
a combination. And that was great. You know, the, the women felt good and there was nothing else. They did, nobody knew where the, the, where the primary came from. Um, it's, if you didn't tolerate it, was you take it or leave it, you know. But most, a lot of the women, you know, and I'm sure you, uh, a lot of you guys have, have, have been on Premarin, have tried Premarin or not, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was the, the miracle drug. But I know what it means. Uh, pregnant marriage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, that was the first time that you could take an outside source of, of, of estrogens and progesterone and, and give it to somebody. And the, although what the, the course was, it just increased the levels of estrogen, increased the uh, progesterone, and everything is going to balance out. But um, <coughs> the synthetic estrogens, uh, they, they, they are called conjugated estrogens. That's why so far Premarin does not have a generic. No company has been able to duplicate whatever wife has done with Premarin. They have similar um, generic, a generic which came out, which is similar to Premarin, but it's not what we call AB rated from the FDA. So you don't, um, it's, they still don't know exactly what's in it. Um, and uh, like you already said, you know, they, they uh, get uh, the, the estrogen from uh, pregnant mares, uh, for horses. You know, when you say, what did I say about the Chinese? The Chinese used uh, female urine. Yeah. So they came in and, and they took it from a horse mm -hmm. and uh, it, uh, it, it, was, it was working. Mm -hmm. Well, animals have been on a lot, just on a little side note, animals have been used a lot. <coughs> right now, the uh, Bayeda is an insulin, um, insulin type of a new, a new brand new medication. It comes from a iguana from a lizard in, in Arizona, from the saliva of, the, of a lizard. I don't know who, who came up with that idea to go test that particular <laughs> lizard, but that's what uh, they use. So animals have been used for a lot of stuff. You know. So then they combine it. You know, When you use estrogen alone, it's, it's, again, it tips the scale on one side. You have to have the balance. So they used uh, the Provera and added it to it. And that would again, uh, mellow out the, the symptoms. And it helped them, you know, they were able to, uh, the women were able to sleep at night, concentrate, you know, they could do uh, no hot flashes, you know, they wouldn't beat up the husbands. Um, but the, uh, one of the problem was, you know, with those hormones, again, since there were just a couple of strengths, there's a point, there's a point three primarine, a point six two five, or one point two five in a 2.5 milligram of, of primary. So you have only four strengths um, available. So each person is differently. So there was no, in, no individual therapy possibility and people started to have side effects. It was too much. Um, so uh, they, they found out that um, progesterone, a lot of people who were, were taking the, uh, the medroxy progesterone had depression breast tenderness, and one which we came up in the last few years, and you have uh, <coughs> read about it, that conjugated estrogens were linked to breast cancer. I'm going to be talking a little bit that uh, a little bit uh, further down the road. Um, so, because there was no individualized therapy, side effects were pretty high. You know, and they believed because, and then uh, Dr. Schomberger is going to show you. Unfortunately, I didn't have the didn't have time to get the uh, chemical structure of those estrogens uh, and uh, like he has some and you will see the little differences on the molecule can create all those problems so um, we'll, we will see now n then suddenly in the last 20 years like uh, Dr. Schoenberger said the word natural came, came about uh, the bioidentical hormone therapy. And um, when we are talking about natural or bioidentical, it is not only the source of the hormone, where do we get the, the hormones from, but it's the structure of the molecule. You know, if the structure of the molecule is the same, then the human estrogen molecule 
and then we can call it bioidentical. And that's what, it's very important. Uh, it's when you talk about natural, it's not just because it comes from a plant. It's just because it is structurally the same on both molecules, human and the plant. You know, and um, th they are <coughs> they were, they are identical to the hormones. One big, one big thing, you know, you have to be aware of it. It is an estrogen molecule or hormone. You will have the same pros and cons with the with the pro and cons of the of the hormones uh, <coughs> um, because it is the same thing. Even so, that it's uh, a natural hormone or from a plant, it still has going to have the same pros and cons, side effects and benef benefits as a regular hormone. So that's a very because a lot of people think. You know, oh, it's a natural hormone, it's the same, you know, it's, it's a go. You know, no, it is not. You still have to monitor it very carefully because you do not want to get too much uh, so because of the side effects. And uh, when we talk about cancers, you know, so a lot of people say, you know, the estrogens is, they can cause cancer. Yes, they can. But I'm going to show how we can diminish that that effect. Um, the basic uh, sterile molecule um, is is extracted from soy and yam plants. So that the labs go in and they do their voodoo magic, and they come up with a structural identical hormone like the body. But when 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 doctors when uh, when Dr. Schomburg uh, initiates a replacement therapy. Um, whether it's an insulin, thyroid, um, any type of a hormone uh, therapy, he will make sure that the hormones that he's, he uses are identical. And that's why they, they, they come to us, because we guarantee what we are preparing is made from, it is bioidentical. One of the hormones that we, that he, we use is DHEA. Dehyd uh, it's too long, DHEA. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and it's a steroid, um, and it's produced by the adrenal gland. That's one of the most uh, available steroid in the body. And DHEA can be, will be broken down in many, many different hormones. It is a, press, a precursor to testosterone estrogens. And uh, DHEA is produced in the adipose tissue. Well, I should have a lot of uh, DHEA in the gonads and in the brain. And it's a very, very important uh, hormone. What does uh, DHEA do? It protects against heart disease. It enhances the immune system. Uh, it, 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 they call it a glucose uh, stabilizer. It will... Um, keep your diabetes, you know, it will help in your diabetes and insulin production. Um, and maintains youth and health, which is pretty much a sense of well-being uh, that reduces stress. So that's, that's why um, it, it, it uh, helps with, uh, to make you feel good. And it stabilizes weight. And I haven't seen much of that. <laughs> How do you dose DHEA? You know, the uh, good adrenal support. You know, uh, you can stimulate the adrenal gland, and it, it can produce DHEA. And you can go with uh, five to twenty milligrams a day. Um, you can start, uh, but again, that's this is a general rule. You know, when Dr. Schoenberger does does a test, he ha he has more test possibilities to to adjust the doses. But again, this is good because we can adjust any, any which way we want. <coughs> uh, if it's too much, we, we reduce it. If it's not enough, we increase it. But what are the side effects of too much DHEA? Well, it can cause acne. Most hormones, will, you will see that it's one of the first things that you break out. Uh, a very oily skin, which leads to the acne. Um, overstimulation or insomnia. It, it, it's a, it, 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 it's keeps you going. Also can cause some uh, hair growth and 
they have discovered that also it's a mild blood thinner. When you take DHEA and you are on Coumadin, any of those, you know, make sure to talk to a pharmacist to make sure that it's okay because a lot of those natural hormones can affect the Coumadin. And Coumadin is, it's a pretty potent drug and you don't really want to increase your levels on there. So any times when you take natural hormones or, and you have any other drugs, make sure to talk to the doctor or to talk to one of us to make sure that there's no, no drug interaction. <coughs> well, estrogen, we already talked a lot. It's the primary sex hormone for female. And there are three types of estrogens. And they are really tough to remember, E1, E2, E3. <laughs> we just need to know which one is what. Um, uh, E1 is estrone, E2 is estradiol, and E3 is estriol. So a lot of times, a lot of people, a lot of times people get confused between the estradiol and estriol. So uh, that's why they have um, put a, a very simple nomenclature on it. Estradiol is produced from uh, testosterone. Estrone is produced from androstenone. Uh, and estriol, estriol really shows up when, when uh, women are pregnant. Uh, the placenta pr uh, produces a lot of estri uh, estriol. So that's where we, you really we will see the, 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 um, the estriol. Now, the dosing. Why when you come to us, you're, you're gonna get either triest, biased, and that's uh, the way we, our combination that uh, we found out, which works pretty good. Uh, as a triad, we have a 10% uh, estrone, 10% estradiol, and 80% estriol. And what is a strong, strong, weak? Well, those two are very powerful uh, hormones. So that's why we use them in really smaller quantity. The other... Um, The other um, thing is about es uh, estrone and estradiol can cause breast cancer. So they, they, you know, when we when we were talking about uh, the cancers, they are the ones who can cause the cancer. Whereas in the premarin, we could not adjust those. You know, we can now in compounding, we can really lower the ratio. You will still get the benefit. However, the risk of developing breast cancer is then diminished too. Estriol is a weaker <coughs> estrogen. That's why we have to put more in. But this one doesn't cause uh, breast cancer. So when we were talking, you know, yes, when somebody asks, yes, it, uh, you can have a risk of breast cancer. However, we can diminish it by customizing the medication for you. Another time, a lot of time, if you don't need, if you don't need the estrone, um, uh, Dr. Shamar will, will uh, prescribe biased. Like only two, <coughs> excuse me, only two uh, estrogens, and the combination can vary from 20 to 50 percent ratio uh, to whatever you know. His the test show we can <coughs> adjust the the strength, and again. Um, we tailor the drug on, on your for your body. Now there was no uh, E1 on the biased because, because it's only two. Three. two. The only two bias is only two. Bias is by bias two. Uh, so they, they, they only use estrogen. I have in ten years, I seen one time from a physician a E1 E3 combination. Uh, but I don't know why they. Uh, the next time when they came in, they changed the prescription. So uh, they went to, to E2, E3. So I think you know, they wanted to try something out and it didn't work. But uh, as of by decree or by, you know, that's the way uh, the, the, the pharmacists will do the trias and bias. Michelle, why, why would, would a doctor want to order the bias versus trias? I mean, if someone has like a risk of like breast cancer in the family and you sort of eat, you know, eat water well, or something? I, I <laughs> never order bias. Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah, but I've seen the point. So I was the, the human body makes the 
three of them, and what we want to do is mimic what the human body does. We're, we're trying to, to have your systems have the same levels and balance of hormones at the age of 60 or 70 or 80 that you had when you were 30 or 40, which means typically you would give all three. The truth is, however, in some women, if you just give estradiol, their livers will convert it to the proper amounts of estriol and estrone. But normally, we, I, I never use bias. A lot of doctors do, but I don't think it's a good idea. Why? I don't think it's a good idea. Because, again, I don't think it's a good idea because it doesn't mimic what Mother Nature's shown. Okay. Are they opposed to E1? That's why they don't, that's why they would order bias. Is it risk of breast cancer? I, why do they order it? Well, you know, that's, that, 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 that could be a point that they will they say, you know, if we give one more or less uh, oh, okay. breast cancer, uh, breast cancer causing, uh, um, you know, that's maybe their rationale. Okay. We, ha we don't see very much uh, bi uh, bias. Um, I have one or two doctors who have prescribed it. Um, and uh, what next time when they call it in, I'm going to ask them because I never really thought about that one, too. Okay, progesterone. Uh, we have pretty much talked about all of uh, all of that, uh, all of that. Uh, the side effects again, like most the most uh, hormones, you will still get the uh, uh, breast tenderness, break breakthrough bleeding, changes in weight, fluid retention, uh, flushing, loss of hair, insomnia, and also amenorrhea when skip a period. The dosing, you know, again, I went uh, with a general, you know, you can do it um, on a cycle, you know, uh, days 15, 14 to 28. Uh, if you take it orally, 100, 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams orally will equival, be equivalent to 20 to 40 milligrams per day. Because of the first, uh, when you take it orally, first pass effect, but we're going to just talk in a few minutes about it. Um, so. Uh, the creams, two to four percent, but I've seen a higher <coughs> creams. You know, when the levels are really, really, really low, they start them off on a higher percentage, and then it, then it's being tailored back to to normal once once equilibrium is reached. Testosterone uh, made in the testes, but it's also made in the ovaries of uh, women. You know, it's uh, it's an important key uh, in both males and females will increase um, libido, energy, immune function, uh, protect women from osteoporosis. Um, and uh, testosterone is produced from progesterone and is a precursor to estradiol. So all those, you know, starting with DHEA and all of that, you know, they all, they come from each other, so they get synthesized through the liver to, to all those their various uh, hormones. One other thing what I, uh, I tell a lot of my patients, you know, if possible, try to use it in the morning if it's in the higher doses, uh, especially on male, because I, it, again, it can keep you awake. So use it in the morning and, uh, and um, that, that, that should give you a good night's sleep. Even the testosterone in the, you know, the... No, for, 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 because it's such, effect, because when you go like two, three, four percent oh. testosterone, up to 10 percent testosterone, you know, if you take that at night, it's, and, and, and women don't get that high. Yeah. You know, for maybe for male, you know, for males, it, it, it can go up to 10%, you know, and that, that if you take it at night, it's, it, can, it can interfere with, with sleeping. You know, the creams, uh, you know, you can have to 0.1, uh, one um, to three milligrams a day. Side effects, same thing, uh, excessive hair growth, well, you, know, you just have to think of the East German uh, swim team. <laughs> you know, when they had to take the five o'clock shadow, you know, <laughs> in the Olympics. Oily skin, acne, male pattern baldness, and <coughs> too much testosterone can cause an aggressive behavior. Um, okay, so bio, the, the bioidentical uh, hormone replacement therapy. How do we now get those hormones, those, those outside hormones, into the body. Um, they are oral, sublingual, vaginal, topical, 
uh, with, uh, with, with uh, suppositories. Well, the easiest one, capsules. Well, you know, we make the capsules, we get the, we get the, the prescriptions, and we can um, formulate the capsules. Uh, they are great, they are easy. They are really easy to dose. You know, one capsule three times a day, you can put it in your purse. Um, they are very convenient. Fortunately, when you take something orally, you will lose a lot through the first pass effect. Uh, when, uh, when, when the drug goes through the liver, it, uh, a lot of uh, the drug will be taken out. That's why we saw on the progesterone on 100 milligrams, you know, you get 20 milligrams effectively out of there. And the rest is going to be taken out, filtered out by the, the liver. So it is, it is convenient, you know, but you have to go with a much higher dose. And the principle in medicine, you try to use the least amount of drug to get the maximum effect. So capsules, some people want them, so they, they you know, if they really want them, you know, we will make them for them. Trochies, trochies, yeah, that's, it's, it's a little square. And we can make it in with a wax uh, base or with an, in a gummy bear base. One other problem is, you know, when you do wax or uh, gummy bear base, you have to heat it up. So when you put uh, the medication in, in uh, the trochee, you know, you can lose. If the temperature is too high, the medication will burn off. So you really are not going to get the, the, the actual uh, strength. You know, you, you have to be very careful with temperature. They taste horrible. I've tried it. Uh, I made some. Uh, to just uh, to try to figure out what, what flavor or to make it when you have a piece of wax in, in your in your cheek, you know, and it's it slowly dissolves, it tastes horrible. So um, for a while, I got uh, I, I had uh, two doctors. They were just out on trochies, and then after the second fill, you know, they all switched it then to a, to a cream because uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't take the taste. The same thing with the sublingual drops. You know they are they are pretty bitter. You know so that the capsule is nice. You get the gelatin cover. It goes down. You don't taste it. Um, we yeah we can do uh, everything else. Well, the vaginal really on, on high dose and for for long term, it's not really the 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 most practical. It's not a practical. It's it's um, also due to the, the environment in the, in, in the vaginal area, the drugs can get uh, affected. Uh, if you do it just once a week, you know, it's fine. Small doses, it will get absorbed, especially if you just do it on the outside, on, on, on the external area. Um, it's, and again, it's, uh, you know, you have to replicate, you know, it's, it's tough to administer. Um, topical. I think that's that's the that's the ticket. You know, first of all, you know when when we dispense when we dispense the um, the drug, uh, we dispense it. It looks a little bit crude, but it's a syringe. It's a 20 cc syringe, and we have mixed the drugs so that each ml we have a 20 we have the 20 ml in there. That means there are 20 doses. You know, so when we have a prescription, doctor writes, okay, uh, I want uh, triest 1.25, uh, 2.5, uh, 40 milligrams of progesterone. So we mix it up. So each dose, when you take the cap off and you squeeze out one line, you know, that's the dose. You know, it's not like when they say uh, one eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon or you know, because you can have a depending first of all tea, which teaspoon you use. Um, that's that's it's very very inaccurate. The second thing, which is really uh, which is neat in those uh, in those syringes, there is no contact to air, so the drug will stay longer, fr uh, fresher. You know, we put a six months expiration date, but you can't keep it for a year. As long as you keep it at room temperature, you know, it will stay. It will stay great. So, if uh, it's not enough, you can use it a little bit more. If you think it's too much, you get some symptoms. You can just cut back. 
So you per, you can play with the dosing yourself, you know, until you find the correct dosing, and then you say, you know what, I I, I tried one and a half ml, that's perfect for me. So with that, we can change the formula. <coughs> so you're still going to use then one ml, but then you're going to have more drug in it. Or you say it's too strong. I want only I, I want to use half an ml. Well, if you're, you can be good, you know, you can squeeze out half an ml out of there. Okay, maybe one day you're going to get a little bit less, but the next day you're going to get the rest. So, individually, you know, you're going to be in therapeutic level. So, I'm going to pass this around, and then a lot of times, um, you can also use 1 ml uh, vaginally. So, we have this little nifty applicator that you can just take, take the plunger out, you can squeeze one ml in it, and then you can uh, administer it, and you can close it back up, and then you use it for the next dose. You know, if you want to, if you guys want to, it's it's you can open it up. It's just the regular base cream. You know, there's no drug in it. You know, so, so. Let me ask you, so this is only a 20 day supply then? Yeah. But, yeah, so, but when you get a 30 day supply, you get uh, yeah, 30 day, you get two syringes of 15. Oh, right? I get you. Okay. You know, so if you get 60 ml, if you use it twice a day, you get three syringes. You know, and again, so the the other two are not being uh, touched by air. You know, you can keep them. They they are uh, there should be no problem with the with the stability of the, of the medication. So that's one thing on the topical cream. You know, that's what we we uh, recommend. And uh, the application, well, you can apply it on any nook and cranny. You know, you can in the inside of the elbows, behind the knees, skin folds. But do me a favor, just rotate the sides. Don't apply it uh, constantly on the same spot because that area can get uh, pretty sensitized. So make sure to, to, to rotate the sides. Do it after a shower. The pores are open and the cream goes in easier. You know. So that's, uh, that's one, uh, one thing I wanted to say, say also about uh, the cream. And of course, one of the most important thing is the relationship between the pharmacist and the, uh, the doctor. If we think there's a certain problem, we, you know, we can call the doctor and say, hey, wait a second, is that correct? Or when we cannot read the hieroglyphics 101, you know, then we can read it, you know, we got to call him and say, hey, what does it say? <laughs> you know, but he has a pretty good handwriting, so, but some doctors don't. Uh, so we have to have a good relationship, and, the, and the, the doctor has to be able to trust us. You know, because otherwise, you know, he's going to perform all those tests and everything, and if we don't do the right, uh, if, we, if we don't use the correct, not that correct, but if we don't use the, the pure, pure medication, the pure progesterone, you know, it will falsify his test, and then he's going to be uh, he's going to be totally uh, um, he won't know what's going on. So he has to trust us. We trust him that uh, what he's doing, and uh, that's the one of the most important things um, that uh, the relationship. And I think we have been, well, like I said, we're working for a long time, and it works uh, pretty good. Well. Once you get it, you know, just run off. You gotta come back, you know, because you gotta keep adjusting. You know, he's not a miracle worker. You know, he, he cannot just say, okay, now you need 1.75, 35, mm -hmm. uh, this, you know. He can guesstimate from the test, but you have to come back to adjust the dose. You know, and the relationship between doctor and patient is very important too, because you, you, you have to be able to talk, tell the, the doctor, you know what, I got an itch here, you know, so I, I got the night sweat here, and then he can make the corrections, and I will, we will fill it to make, uh, to make you guys feel better. Uh, cost of therapy, usually it's around 30, 40 dollars, it depends on what, what strength it is, you know, it's, uh, and the quantity, you know, so they, no, a normal 30 day supply is between 30 and 40 dollars a month. Well, if you go, if you are uh, uh, with Catalyst RX, with, uh, with it, work with the state, you get a brand name drug, it's $40. You know, so the, the therapy is not that expensive. Uh, yeah. And um, <laughs> they, they, in most insurances, more and more are paying for it. 
you know. More and more, they are, they are, they are paying for it. So we, we can use the insurance cards, and we will bill uh, the, the insurance, you know, um, and if they tell us no, you know, there's not much we can do. A lot of times then you can take the bill and, and hand bill it to the physician, to the insurance, and they will pay for it. So uh, it has come up a really good, you know, because five years ago, you couldn't get one through. That was, they would not pay for it. They would not touch it with a 10-foot pole. But now it's, it's really becoming uh, more common. <laughs> if, if you have any questions, you know, that's it. I'm sorry it took so long. And um, do you have any questions? Well, actually, we're going to have a question and answer here. Let okay. me kind of go through this, Mike. Okay. And, uh, no problem. We'll do a question and answer okay. in a little bit. I got you. That, that, does more. that was a great presentation. Yes. It gives you a little. Yeah background, some of the good stuff that uh, uh, that comes from Mike, and Mike, as I say, I've used a lot of compounding pharmacists. I get almost no complaints when Mike is making the, the prescription, so I'm just uh, delighted to, to be able to work with you, Mike, on this. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pick up on a couple points, and, and as, as promised, <laughs> I'm going to show you something that's really quite fascinating. Uh, but the difference between, I'm 61 now, but the difference between me now, the biggest difference between me now and me 30 years ago is one, I'm a little smarter, and at least I think I am, and two, uh, my hormones are lower. That's the biggest difference. So it, the, the key, the real key, and there's lots of things we can do. I mean, exercise is right in there. Taking supplements is right in there. Eating well is right in there. These are fabulous things to do to to keep young and, and, and slow down that aging process, let you live longer, prevent disease. But number one, the biggest thing you can do is keep your hormone levels up. The difference is, there's lots of hormones, as Mike pointed out, and some of you guys are low in some and high in others, and the one sitting next to you is low in the one you're high in, and it's just it's very different. So it's, it's just a matter, of, you need custom compounding. There's no way any drug company out there can make a pill that's going to fit everybody. It can't, it cannot happen. So uh, but working with a good compounding pharma uh, pharmacist is essential to, to getting what we need to do in medicine, and get the job done. Uh, Mike kind of covered what hormones do for us uh, pretty well. Uh, he told you a little bit about the deficiency symptoms and all that kind of thing. Um, so I'm probably going to just sort of pass over that unless we've got some questions about that. Uh, he, he mentioned the symptoms of hormone deficiencies, but he pretty much talk, mostly talked about ladies, and you guys probably pretty much all know that. You know, the hot flashes. There are three main areas this, this, in, on women. This is going to impact. This is true for men, too, by the Three main areas are going to impact on you. Number one is the brain. What you might not realize is even though these are called sex hormones, they influence every cell in your body. Every cell in your body, from your pancreas to your lungs to your brain, have sex hormone receptors. Uh, particularly the brain, very sensitive to fluctuations in sex hormones. So sensitive that sex hormones are the primary difference between the female brain and the male brain. There's a big difference there. And that is primarily to do with the sex hormones. If you'll take an animal and at birth substitute hormones out, you'll develop all the psychological and mental characteristics of that sex. So, when your hormones go down, you really got to think, what's going to happen to my brain? You won't think as clearly. You won't be able to focus or concentrate as well. Your memory will start to slip. You may very likely have mood disturbances. And now this is true for men too. The, the, the thing with men is, because ours go down at such a slow rate, we don't, often don't know it. We can't like say, oh, you know what? I started to get wacky. Just gradually over the last 15 years. We, we can't see that. But you ladies know, I started to get wacky, you know, when I start having periods. You can make the connection. But we can't. All we know is, you know, I'm 61 years old and I'm all depressed. I must be depressed because my life is, you know, and we go on with psychological stuff. The fact is, a lot of times it's just give some uh, testosterone to a man and his whole world can turn around. So if your husbands are grumpy, if they're becoming 
less passionate, and I don't just mean passionate about you, I mean passionate about their life in general. If your hubby five years ago just couldn't wait to go play golf or go do work or go do his thing, and then I say, eh, the golf prices are too high, or you know, that kind of thing, think testosterone. If he's losing his zest for life, obviously, if he doesn't care about sex anymore, that's a, that's a hallmark of a decrease in, in sex hormones. Um, so I just do want to mention that there's, there's a lot of things you want to think about symptoms in terms of men with this stuff. Next, Mike kind of hinted on this, but I want you to understand that taking sex hormones is not a matter simply of alleviating symptoms. I have patients that come in to see me that have no symptoms. I saw a lady today. She has no symptoms at all. It, she just kind of went through the menopause, as some women will do. And she's now two years into it since she's had her last period. She doesn't have any hot flashes, doesn't have any mental symptoms. Really, she's doing pretty well. You will meet ladies like that. That's because the adrenal glands can kick in and make the sex hormones, as Mike was talking about. And that they kind of like work okay in those kind of women. I give them hormones anyway, because hormones prevent disease. They prevent virtually every disease you can get as you get older. And that kind of makes sense. Because what's the biggest difference between me at age 61 and me at 30 is hormones. You don't get all these diseases when you're 30. You do when you're 60. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out hormones probably got something to do with this. And they do. I'm talking osteoporosis. I'm talking arthritis. I'm talking cancer. And yes, sex hormones prevent cancer. I'm talking about uh, diabetes, most definitely. I'm talking about strokes, heart attacks, hypertension, um, and certainly Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia which are not quite labeled. So virtually anything that can go wrong with you as you get older has a much less chance of going wrong with you if you supplement your sagging hormone levels. Um, in terms of what are bioidentical hormones, Mike uh, talked about that there basically hormones that are molecules identical to the ones that are already in your body. There's no difference. And I'm going to, in the next, the last part of my talk, is really going to focus on that because that's pretty much key. Uh, are they safe? Uh, everybody wants to know, are hormones safe? In my book, they're 100% safe. Do you realize that there has never been one study about bioidentical hormones that indicate that it's anything but safe? Now, we know that too much of anything, including coffee, isn't good for you. So it's, it's obviously it's important to get your dosing right. But leaving the dosing aside, when you look at ladies and men at the age of 20 and 30 who have hormone levels like this and don't get sick, and then you look at the same people 30 years later and their hormones are like this and they get sick, you don't have to be a rocket science to figure out that it wasn't hormones that made them sick. It was lack of hormones. So just what we want to do is bring your levels up to where they were here. We don't want to put you here, make you superwoman. We don't want to put you below what you need and not bring you up to par. We want to get you just right. That's an individual thing. And it involves testing and maybe some retesting and basically talking to you a lot. Is that testing blood tests or is it already <coughs> Okay, she's asking about what kind of testing you do. You can test blood. You can test urine. And then you can test saliva. By far and away, the most important is saliva. I don't even use the other forms of testing because they can't even begin to compete with the accuracy of saliva. And if you want to, and the question answer.